So my name is Lou Shepard and I am one of two uh, artists in residence with the Pilots Initiative uh, through the DICE uh, at the Faculty of Ed this year. My name is Ingrid Berger. I work at the Red Path Museum. I take care of our public program and all the science outreach. Um, hi, I'm Jessica. I'm a PhD student here at the Red Path Museum and I study um, the ecological consequences of the loss of toad tadpoles on the environment. So my name is Tanya Kishli Furman. I am a third year education student at McGill University. The young participants came in really already very excited about science. It was really cool to see the ways that they were eager to share what they knew with us. Uh, and really, really cool that they were able to connect with the content specialists, the graduate students, um, because that was a wealth of knowledge for them really far beyond what they necessarily would have been able to access say like at their school. Uh, so they're actually talking to paleontologists or paleontology students who have been on archaeological digs um, and they're actually talking to people who are working in the field of science. I have a lot of students that were surprised that art was something that science did and that scientists did. When I explained to some like this is my sketchbook that was really surprising to them because they're like, you're a scientist. And I'm like, yes, and here's the skulls I draw. <laughs> it's kind of sick. Um, I also, um, there was, when we did, it was painting from minerals. So we had um, rocks and then the pigments that you could make from them. They ground up charcoal and, and used it. Um, and during that, we also taught them how to identify minerals with like magnets and by like hardness scratches and scratching on stuff. And they were super surprised. like those two things connected, like the art material that you use comes from this. So the Red Pot Museum has a really great collection of different um, artifacts uh, related to ancient Egypt. So we um, kind of created a scenario where students, um, we pretended that they traveled back in time and they were craftsmen in ancient Egypt and they have to create different jewelry pieces um, based on a client profile. So it was really interesting because students were able to understand the significance of different colors um, and really tailor that to a specific client, as well as they were able to understand um, the role that jewelry played within that society, whether it be in relation to social class or different um, factors. So that was a workshop that, really, um, that they really enjoyed. They got this uh, opportunity to experience the museum not just as a visitor but actually as somebody who is activating the collection and so that's also something that I think is pretty rare and pretty exciting. You come into a museum and mostly you're asked to stand and sort of look uh, and kind of go through a collection and sort of observe what's on display for you but they actually got the chance to handle certain aspects of the, of the collection, to uh, at one point we brought out mic uh, microscopes uh, to look at certain slides and think about like, what, what they were seeing on a more microscopic level. Um, they got to go through and talk to people who are actually putting these displays together and talk about why they were putting the displays out the way they were. A lot of um, discovery-based learning. Can you notice something here? You know, the, director for, or the teacher facilitating this inquiry Look closely, smell, touch the mineral, scrape a mineral to get, we, we've learned how to paint with minerals. I think it's very beneficial, especially to, um, to make science more accessible. We often have like the ivory tower and that um, image of like a stoic scientist sitting in a laboratory, and that's not what science is. In my everyday science life, I'm knee deep in mud following toads around, and I'm drawing things. And it's important that people see that side of science and that they see that science is something um, accessible to them and something that they can definitely do and achieve as a career if they want because it's not just your stereotypical white man with crazy hair. It wasn't books. It wasn't, you know, deep digging into a Wikipedia site. 
uh, wasn't YouTube. It was, those are wonderful ways of learning and getting information, but this was a uh, more tactile, more three-dimensional, more applied way of getting information beyond the sort of the norm, the normal ways that teens are supposed to be, at, that we're told that they access information. Having a hands-on activities where you're not just, you know, reading and um, questions and you're answering them, but you're actually getting to see, okay, I know that um, there is jewelry in ancient Egypt, but what was the day-to-day -day activities of a craftsman? How did they design the jewelry? Uh, what are the significance of those pieces? Really get them to partake in different activities makes all the difference. The idea of actually making uh, education programs outside of, say, like we're actually like within a within an informal setting, is really interesting and kind of very di very distinct from working in a, in a in a in a classroom, I guess. So, so the opportunity for students to do that was pretty exciting for me, and I hope that that's an opportunity that continues uh, through what happened with this program.